Tonight, together with the whole Christian church around the world, we observe the solemn occasion of Good Friday, the crucifixion, sufferings, and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. The theme for tonight is the way in which Jesus' saving death has restored true meaning to the world. Our text is from 1 Peter 1, beginning in verse 14 as follows. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. So what does Jesus' death mean for us? What does the shedding of the precious blood of the sinless Son of God mean for us sinners whom Christ has died for? It means full forgiveness. It means being reconciled to God who created the universe. It means being rescued from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil itself. It restores meaning to life itself. In our text, Peter writes, you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Futile, empty, meaningless, vain. Those are what we inherit according to the flesh. Each one of us lives our lives one after another after another, from day to day to week to month to year to lifetime. And if there is nothing more, if this is all there is, then we are, of all people, most miserable. The Bible even reminds us of this. Think of that language in Ecclesiastes. It starts out, vanity, vanity, all is vanity. Apart from God, it is complete and utter meaninglessness. We can strive after possessions. We can strive after experiences. We can look for things and people. But at the end of the day, that is never enough to satisfy. It will not be enough. We are, in some respects, much like the people of the Titanic. You know, 110 years ago, going along on the unsinkable ship, living their best life now, enjoying all that they have, not knowing that the Titanic is about to be gone. That is our lives apart from God. And that's really, at the end of the day, all that this world has to offer us. One more way of getting through without purpose. But we are not without purpose. Because we have been purchased by the blood of the Son of God. As the disciples watched Jesus suffer and breathe his last, that may have on the surface appeared to be the most meaningless of all things. Why should the sinless Son of God die in sadness? And yet in that event lies the core and very heart of what it means to be a human being. To be a human being means to be loved by God. Not as long as you're doing the right thing, 
Not for a while, or sort of, but completely and utterly, God embraces you and the whole world on the cross. Because of that, because God has shown that love is the purpose, he gives that love to you and frees you to love one another. To give of yourself. Why? Because you have been given all things. That's the gift. Your life matters before God, before one another. Every one of you. That's the gift. God takes this work that looked like it was utility and meaningless, and from that pain and sorrow, he brings about the salvation of the whole world. Now, if God can work that out of such violence and sorrow, imagine what God can work in your life. That's what God comes to give to you this day. God has ransomed you from the futile ways inherited from our forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. A lamb without spot or blemish. He died for you. Jesus' name. Amen.